Hey there, Cupty friends. It's Tina the Scrapping Rabbit. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel today. In this video, we are going to be creating a couple of Mickey and Minnie themed purse boxes using some dies from the Scrappy Tales crafts. I'm so excited. Let's get started. So here is the first die that I'm going to be using. This is the A7 purse pop-up card die. It comes with this pocket that's on the right. This is the second set that I'm going to be using. It's the A7 purse pop-up add-on dies. So many different layers and different options and different ways you can use this. So my inspiration for this project was this purse by Kate Spade. I love this Minnie Mouse purse and I just thought it would be so fun to try to recreate something similar. Obviously not a backpack but a handbag there. So I went ahead and cut out all of the layers. I found this black and white polka dot cardstock in my stash and I also cut out some 110 pounds uh, black cardstock so I did two layers so that I could layer them together now I have this shiny black specialty cardstock it is one-sided but it kind of has a patent leather look so I cut out four different straps two of the 110 pound black cardstock and two of the shiny patent leather looking cardstock that I had to create the handles for my purse. For the little ears, I cut out two circles. Now this is from a punch that I have in my stash. It's one from ages ago, and I believe it's one and a half inches is what it says there for the circle. So if you have a die or a punch, that works perfectly for this. And then I grabbed the bow from the A2 high heel shoe die and I cut it out of some red glittered cardstock. I didn't have any red with the white polka dot in my stash, so I went with the glitter. I went ahead and cut out with the 110 pound cardstock the pocket, and now I'm just going to glue all of my layers together. So this cardstock is on the thin side, so I'm reinforcing it with this 110 pound black cardstock. I'm just smoothing it out. And I did that for both of the panels for the front and back. And using liquid glue is my preferred because it helps me to line up the layers better. Now this pocket can be used in more than one way. You can use, uh, follow the score lines on all of these to create a pocket that folds flat if you wanted it to be a pop-up card. But because I'm wanting to create boxes, I'm just folding the first line and I'm just gluing them together to create this little box. So again, I didn't want these to fold flat, so that's why I'm not following all of the score lines. I'm just reinforcing the glue with my bone folder and then that is, makes the little box. So here's the little pockets that I cut out and I cut out all these little metallic pieces using some like a silver um, textured cardstock and I'm just gluing that little zipper there onto the back the back panel of the shiny cardstock that I created and I'm gluing it to the top of this pocket for a different look and I'm using the glue to get these little tiny pieces all of these little detailed pieces really help to make for cute little handbags so much detail and this is just these are just a few of the dies now for the handle I figured out something that I didn't from when I made my Hello Kitty purses uh, in my other video. I went ahead and snipped the rings off because I wanted to have a two piece layer so that the little ring would actually go underneath the layers making it look even more realistic. So I cut the shiny piece and then I'm just going to grab the plain black cardstock and glue the metal rings down. And then when I glue the shiny cardstock on top, it's gonna go over those rings and then that really makes it look more realistic. So I'm just going, going to reinforce that handle, make it double layered, and then have that other piece there that I trimmed down go right over. So now it really looks more like a real handbag handle. So I have cut all the little 
uh, bolts down bolts as well and I'm just using my tool to pick those up because they are tiny but all of these details I think make such a difference so now that I have my handles made, I have all of my layers cut out. I'm just going to glue directly onto the box and I'm gonna line my side panels and use my fingers to push down and reinforce it with my bone folder. This comes together so easy and I really think that it, these turned out so cute and there is the front and the back and then now to do the top of the purse now I haven't done this yet so I'm learning it for the first time here so I just folded along the edges and then I'm going to glue on that outside piece right there to, and butt it up to the inside of the box and then fold it over to make sure that I have it lined up right and just kind of hold it in place while that glue sets it helps to just kind of hold it in place while that glue sets. So for the ears, I had wished that I had remembered to punch out some black cardstock to make it more finished in the back. So now the back of the ears are just going to have the white because I forgot to do that. So if you're going to use a one-sided colored card or colored paper, make sure that you uh, glue it to a cardstock so it has a more finished look. To keep my handbag closed, I went ahead and I bought these little Velcro fasteners that are adhesive. And um, so I'm just going to line it up by putting one edge on the end of the top and then getting the matching side attached and then pressing the adhesive down to the front of the purse. And then I'm just gonna push down with my fingers to get those glued on there nice and firm and then just gluing the edges of those handles to the front. Now this, this cardstock is really slippery, <laughs> so it kept moving around. And so I had to keep pushing with pushing on it and messing with it to get it to stay in place. But see how I wish I would have glued the black cardstock to the back of the ears because I decorated the back of the handbag, but oh well. <laughs> now I'm adding the little pocket to the back side of the box. And so the next bag I make, I'll make sure that I punch out some black cardstock. So I wanted to use that little heart to have a little heart dangling from the zipper pull. And so I just glued it there on the tip. And that shiny cardstock is really slippery. So it does, you have to kind of hold it in place for it to really um, attach. And then there's the bow and I'm just gonna add some glue. And again, I wish I would have used some red cardstock for that bow too, so that the top of it would be red from the back side as well. And I'm just trying to clean up the glue, slipping and sliding. For the center of my bow, I'm going to add a heart rhinestone bling from my stash, just centering it there. And I just think that this little purse turned out so cute. So I saw that there were these little tiny dangles. And so I cut a strip of one of the layers from the purse and then I just trimmed it down to this little tiny rectangle and then I'm adding that little, the little, um, what is this? Like a little fringe there. Now you can actually create a tassel. There's a tassel die included in this kit, but I just wanted to have these little poles in the front so that it looked like that backpack and it's gonna kind of stick out from under the flap of the purse. And then to for the knot, I'm using some of these little pearls to give it a little dimension. Little details like this can make all the difference and I really love how this turned out. And it's harder to see on camera, but in person, I feel like the shiny cardstock makes it stand out and I think that it turned out so cute. So there is the front and back. And that is my mini box. For the Mickey box, I went ahead and uh, put the handles together, just like I did for the mini. And I created the pocket, the box, and I cut out all of the layers like we did for the mini. 
same thing. So now for the panels for the Mickey purse, I went ahead and ran it through with an embossing folder to get this quilted look. Now the picture that I saw for the inspiration for this Mickey purse had a quilted look. So I'm using this Lisa Horton padded quilt embossing folder and I really love how it turned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these panels together. It was a little hard to glue these together because I put the glue, I think, on the wrong side. So the next layer, I'm going to add the glue to the flat side of the cardstock instead of the embossed cardstock so that it really presses down evenly. So I had to work with it a little bit to get the glue to meet the back side of the paper. So this time I'm using putting the glue to the flat paper and then adhering it to the embossed paper and then that worked a lot better for me. Just lining it up, filling the edges with my fingertips so that they are aligned and just pushing down to make sure that the glue is meeting the, the layers. So now that I have the front panel there, I went ahead and cut one out of red and trimmed it down for the Mickey shorts. And I think it turned out so cute. Now for the buttons, I found an oval from one of the Scrappy Tails dies. This is the patisserie storefront add-on and it's the stool. And so I just trimmed that down, the little seats from the stool. And I think that that worked out perfect for the Mickey bag. And here was my inspiration. So you see, it's kind of has that quilted look with the red in the pockets and the little ovals for the buttons. And so that is how I came up with this idea. And now I'm just going to adhere those little stool seats for the Mickey buttons. And I think this turned out adorable. So for the flap, I opted to not emboss it so that it would stand out a little bit more. And the same thing, I'm going to go ahead and adhere both of these panels to the front and back of my little treat box there, the body of the purse that you can tuck some goodies in there. And again, putting the glue onto the box, it makes it less messy because you know exactly where the glue is going to meet the panel. I'm just reinforcing that with my bone folder and there is the body of the purse. Same thing, I'm gonna add the glue to that outer flap and adhere it to the back of the box, lining the front up to make sure that it is put on there level and even. and just holding it for a few seconds for the glue to take. So this box turn, turned out a little bit more finished because the ears are the black cardstock, so they are black both front and back. And then I'm just folding over the flap so that I can get good alignment. And when you're working with liquid adhesive, it gives you that wiggle room so that you can line things up perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and add that Velcro just like we did with the mini and press it down in the front and make sure that I have nice have it nice and attached by pressing down firmly. And there is the body of the handbag. So now just to glue those handles on, I'm going to add the glue just to the bottom areas there. Now you could actually add another layer to where you have it covered on both sides, front and back. And so it can be super finished looking to where everywhere you look, it looks like a real purse. I just did it to the front and back and then I'm gonna add that same little pocket using my tweezers to clean up some of that little glue that is kind of seeping out. And I added extra glue because this is textured and so I wanted to make sure that it attached there nicely. And the glue does rub off pretty easily. So now for a sentiment, I'm going to use some black cardstock. And this set, sentiment set is from the Storefront Sentiment 3x4 stamps. And I chose this little sentiment because it was the perfect size. And I'm just going to prepare my uh, black cardstock there. I'm going to use some Versamark. And I'm going to first use some gold embossing powder. I decided that this wasn't the color that I wanted to go for with because I used the silver metallic cardstock for all of the hardware for the purses. So I changed my mind and I went ahead and did the same exact thing with some silver embossing powder in the end. 
and I found this rectangular die from the Cardinal Blessings Coordinating Die Set. So it's amazing if you look through your dies, you can find so many different layers that you can use for something else, kind of how I did for this project. But this little rectangle was the perfect size for a label and the perfect size for this little sentiment. So in the end, I did stamp it and emboss it with some silver embossing powder because it matched, like again, like I said, with the hardware even better. It made me wish that I had chosen gold, but because I like the gold sentiment better. But in the end, I think that these turned out so cute. And I did try the red cardstock for the label, but I really liked the way that the black looked better. It kind of was more subtle and a lot more similar for a realistic looking purse. So these are the finished handbags. There is my Mickey and you just pop it open just like that and you have a nice pocket there just tuck in some goodies. Front and back are nicely finished. Here is the mini handbag. The front is finished. The back, I wish I would have done those ears, but there you go. Thank you guys again for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you like my project. I hope I've inspired you to use your A7 Purse pop-up card dies. All the products are linked below. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye for now.